Hey everybody, welcome to the Two Dudes Podcast. Uh, I am Rick. I'm joined with Kevin. As usual, we do our thing, talk about anything and everything, give our take on a bunch of different subjects. And we got a couple of subjects today and uh, possibly some guests today. So we hope that we can interest you, incite you, and uh, hey, maybe even start a little controversy. Speaking of controversy, this is something that we all knew, but eh, it was an unsaid thing, but you knew it happened. A report came out, McDonald's worker reveals what he does when someone demands fresh fries. And you can almost know what they do. They take the damn fries that are underneath the heat lamp. They put them back in the basket, dunk it in the hot oil for a few seconds, pull it out and then put it back in the uh, fry container and then speed you off on your way at the drive-thru. Now, if y'all didn't know that they did that, and this is news to somebody, I got news for you. That's what they do. I mean, shoot, I done known that forever. Way back in the day, when I was 16, working at Burger King out in Raytown, um, shoot, my manager used to do that all the time. We hear fresh fries on the drive-thru window. She's like, okay. And I'm looking, I'm like, well, we got two larges right there. We gonna waste them? She's like, nah, she dunk them in the hot oil for 30 seconds, pull it out, put it back in the thing. They're hot enough for them. I'm like, okay, that's what Where works. Was the thing in right town? It's not there anymore. Um, it would have been up there on the corner of uh, Raytown Road and 350 Highway. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's a, uh, uh, a pawn shop across the road from there. It's some kind of the kind of restaurant I think it is now. Well, a, a KFC on the corner of Raytown Road and 350. No, no, it'll be across the street from there. And Burger King's in, is on like on that strip now yeah, in the, the middle of 350. Yeah, the Burger King's not there anymore. No, I said there is a Burger King now that's on the. On yeah, the I know strip what you're saying. But yeah, it was. Right in the middle, but across the way. Uh, uh, if you're talking about past where the repair shop is, going further over by the pawn shop, you know, there, that stuff's changed a couple times. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, remember, that was when I was 16. I'm 51 now, so I'm Man, sure it's changed. All right, now, if you, you, you right behind me. Don't forget. Now. Uh, you're eight years older than me, so when you were 16, I was eight. So, as I was on the main streets of Bell Fountain, I didn't know where Raytown was, because my aunt and uncle had moved to Raytown. They was living off, they was in Topping in uh, off Thirty Second and Top in that complex or whatever. So we didn't know hey. about town yet. All right, I'm gonna school y'all right now on the fresh fry thing. Obviously, this is what I do when I want them hot and fresh. I just tell them, hey, um. I need a large order of fries with no salt. They can't use the same fries. So they have to put new ones down. They're fresh. And then when I pay at the window, I'm like, oh, can I get a couple packets of salt? Done. You're petty for that and you're childish. <laughs> I am, but it works. I get hot, fresh fries. I can put my own salt on them. Mm -mm, good. Guaranteed fresh all the time. I ain't got time for all that. What do you mean? It's the same amount of time. That's that's what it's, it's I'm just just getting my shit so I can go. I don't care. None of that shit's healthy for you anyway. So I tell you what's a rip off. I went to Taco Bell to try they is it a chicken sandwich? Is it not? Yeah, I want to kick their ass for that. That they gave my fucking money back. It's a taco turned sideways. That's all that shit is. No, you it's about the size it. of two chicken nuggets. Is that small? Yes. Ugh, I'm sorry. Probably like a melted bar of soap. It just, it, I was like, this is what the fuck y'all, this, this is it right here? And then make it so bad, the little tortilla or whatever. Like, if my hand is the chicken, the tortilla comes about right there. What, what, what's the purpose of even putting it on there? Wow. So basically, what we're saying is Kevin got ripped off. You motherfucking right, I did. And I ordered two of them. I was like, this some bullshit for real. Now, closing out, I know you said none of it's healthy, but think about this. 
out of all the food that gets moldy, gets old, you can have a McDonald's fry in your car in between the seats or on the carpet for 10 years. It still looks the same when you finally vacuum your car out. It ain't going to taste the same. No. It may look the same, but it ain't going to taste the same. Shit, I wouldn't know. I don't go around eating them old-ass fries. Yeah, I would hope. Well, then again, you know, you've been around long enough. That might be why your beard is white now, you know. My beard is white. My beard is white because of children. Anyway. You ain't got nothing now. You ain't got nothing. Oh, you wait. You got girls, too. Wait till they start dating. You're going to be trying to kill people. Man, you seen the text I sent you about about that one movie. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, I don't know why it has that effect on me. It is what it is, bro. And then they was here this past week, and I was like, we got to watch this. When it comes out, it's gonna be on HBO Max. And Kaylee was like, I, I don't wanna watch a movie about a white guy. I was like, it's no, outside that and watch the trailer. And I'm crying as they're watching the trailer. Really? They like, are you okay? I was like, I'm fine. I don't know why I'm fucking crying. And so they, uh, then they was like, here, get some clean. I don't need no damn Kleenex. I'm all right. <laughs> you got busted. <laughs> I ain't trying to hide, but I was, cause I was saying to myself, why the fuck am I crying? But I guess it's the correlation in some regards, you know. It's like it kind of mirror. We, I don't want to say I mirror him, but I mirror him because I'm a dad, two, you know, two daughters, playing a predominantly white sport, very few blacks. And so it's just like, and, you know, they're living way better than how I grew up. And, you know, that was his goal for them to, you know, change their lives, they lives or whatever. To where I've done that, and my kids, they know, they uh, they know nothing about the hood or the projects or whatever. All they know is suburbs, being somewhat middle class. They don't know about poverty, and so it's just so it's like it's it's a lot of similarities and everything. But it was just like I can't stop fucking crying every time I see this trailer. I was like, damn. Damn it, Will Smith, you deserve an Oscar, and I ain't even seen the movie yet. Although everything I've read said it, it's probably like his best since Ali, and like he killed it. Really? Yeah. I mean, I guess, bro, but I don't know. I don't know. Something about Will Smith lately that um, I can't quite put my finger on it, but he hasn't dropped down to Jamie Foxx level, but at the same time, he's he's not he's not Denzel Morgan Freeman level either. So what the hey? What 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 happened? What happened where? I mean, what why why the hate on Will? What what did he do? What no no? What, I said he hasn't dropped to uh, Jamie Foxx level. No, you just like something about. I mean, he's made the. Uh, it, 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 ain't, it ain't about his movies. It ain't about his movies. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm. He I seems know like he done gotten you, soft. You said what? He seemed like he done gotten soft. I don't think he's gotten soft. I just think he's peeled the layer back to where he wants people to see he's human. Now that his kids hey, are older. Hey, I'm human as fuck. If my woman ever came in this door and said, "Hey, I think we should sleep with other people," you gonna find me on the ten o'clock news, straight. I won't be on the news. I just be like, all right, well, I guess we done it. But I mean, teachers is on. I just, <laughs> I, I give him credit. I think he waited till his kid was of age, and now the social as big as it is, to where he's like, all right, I'm gonna let y'all see me, but I'm still gonna do me. To where, you know, they say every time he does something, it breaks records because his social is just that damn huge. You know, because he got fans that are just thirsting to know what is he doing. What is he doing? I know right now he should be sitting back on top of the mountain how horrible Suicide Squad 2 was without him. That movie needed him so bad it was ridiculous. Actually, it did pretty well, I heard. Now, it's I'll be the judge time. of it because it'll come out on uh, DVD here soon. Yeah, like I watched it on HBO Max and I was just like, these new characters they thought up, trash. Well, I think that was the whole point. James Gunn picked some off-the-wall crazy characters that people don't even know about. Trash. Although I did like Israel Elba's character, but it wasn't touching Will. Trash. Well, technically, I think that was written for Will. 
and after he turned it down, they already had the script ready, so they had to find this closest hero slash villain that they could to match it. Yeah, they could do it with like gun, all this and third. So they just basically plugged them in. Trash. And old girl, she can't carry a movie by herself. Trash. What about John Cena? The reason why I bring him up is because they spinned off his character uh, coming to HBO Max in November, I believe. The Peacemaker is going to have his own uh, mini series. He was what I expected. You know, he kind of was a double crosser in the movie. He did what I expected. He was John Cena. You know, he's he's on the path of being bigger than The Rock, possibly. Yeah, you couldn't see him because I didn't see it coming. Um, yeah, now slow down here. Let's not be rash. He's not going to be bigger than The Rock anytime soon. I don't know. John Cena, John Cena can't command a salary. Rock can. Well, right now, it's kind of hard to command anything with still doing the streaming. You see how, even the old girl uh, from the, the Marvel, whatever, Scarlett she Johansson. got a check for 20 mil. And then that's when they try to skirt that on her back end money. We're putting it on streaming. Mm-hmm. I figure like you already got a fat check. You ain't aware about nothing else. But you know how Disney got caught? She's tight with The Rock, who made it in his deal. You don't stream until this movie's ran in theaters for a while. Well, they had agreed on that, and they back, They went back on. I guess they yeah, talked. And she, she talked to The Rock, it. and she said, "Is that how they did you?" And he's like, "No." So she called her lawyer, made that shit happen. And see, and that's the thing. That lets you know they would have won had she not got advice because she was going to let it happen. But they must have got her husband works on Saturday Night Live and uh, he only makes so much. So she needs the money. Damn, I forgot. That's one of the weekend update dudes. Yeah, I can't believe he fucking pulled her. I had a chance. <laughs> I should have right. sooner been in New York. Eternals is coming out soon. You got Selma Hayek. You got uh, Angelina Jolie. Selma Hayek is too old, but I would hit it once. Her and Angelina Jolie just cause. Just to say I you know. Selma Hayek at my age, so I ain't worried about that. That's cool. I mean, it's not good. you singers knock yourself out. Hey, you whippersnappers just don't know. Them, them young ones will just take your money and run. I didn't say I need nobody young. I just need them in their prime. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Um, in their prime, all the name ain't Optimus. Speaking of money, got a realistic question for you. How long do you think Social Security is going to last, and will we be able to retire? You will. I won't. Damn. I think. You will be one of the last ones that will be able to get it by the time I get because you know the the uh goal post, shall we say, the goal line is moving further and further. I think retirement is now like 63 or something. So like it's moving more and more. So by the time you get to that pinnacle, which is like about five, six years, you'll be able to. When it comes to me, I'm I'm never gonna see it. I'm gonna probably die at the at my desk on the clock. Hope they give me overtime. Well, remember, it depends on when you get grandfathered in. I can retire at 62 for early retirement. It's still 65 for normal retirement. And that's actually what's killing Social Security because these jobs don't found the loophole to where they're telling people, "Hey, if you retire right now, you'll get this. If you wait till later." You're not gonna. You're gonna get less. So that's what's killing the killing things right now. Like majority of my uncles, they've retired early. So they was like, "You'll get more now versus later." Right. So that that's what's going like in a lot of these jobs, like Ford, GM. Um, hey, we don't speak that name on this show anymore. Whatever, motherfucking um, post office. They're all doing that to try to get rid of a lot of people that are still there that are making an obscene amount of money ain't doing nothing. What you so mean, like, whatever? Who, they did me dirty, man. Who did you dirty? Ford. Uh, they did not do you dirty. Yeah, they the did. The pandemic did you dirty. That wasn't Ford. That was a pandemic. What's COVID got to do with my Bronco? 
uh, the facility that that chip or whatever is on the boat in the ocean still waiting to dock. <laughs> that's what it's doing. Hell, that's why I'm giving up the idea of getting that Mustang because the price of vehicles are stupid right now. The basic uh, Model E, A, whatever the fuck it's called, yeah. starts at 42. The what? next one up is like in the 50s, and the, the big boy package is like down near 70. For 42, I can get a Cadillac CTS. I don't want no punk ass Cadillac for it to die in the year. Shit, you lost your mind. A Cadillac CTS ain't nothing but a Corvette. It's a I'm Corvette engine in there. Somebody want that gas guzzling bitch. But yeah, and I saw one of the Mustangs this past Saturday when I was DJing. I was like, man. Which one? The regular one or the electric one? Uh, it was an electric one. It was a red one, too. Yeah, you like, get half a block off of charge. You get what? You get half a block off of charge. I don't know what they get off of. I don't know. Them up would look nice. That's all I know. But I, I, know. Uh, but I will say also, it's not as big as I thought it was, but it still was the same size. If that makes sense, I expect it to be like a little bit wider, but it wasn't. But it still looked good, sound good. Motherfucker's quiet, rides real smooth. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, you said it sound good. You shouldn't be able to hear that damn thing. Yeah, well, I'm talking about just, you know, everything about it look nice, but I'm just like, do I really want to pay damn near 50 for a vehicle? Do I really want to be tied down like that? And that's all I was like, let me just go back to my original one, the SUV, because. That's kind of a stupid amount of money to spend when I know these prices are escalated because of what's going on. Like, I saw now, a car tax. Real they quick got, before we go to Kaz, what? you mentioned going to the uh, the truck. Mm -hmm. It's new also. Why isn't there a chip shortage there? Th that's how I know Ford is jacking with people. Bro, they not. Trust me, they not. GM's having the same issue. I got a friend that worked for GM. Every vehicle is made different. It's all about what's in that vehicle. Ford right now is trying to find, and GM too, other manufacturers for certain things. Because who they usually go to, keep giving them, we don't know when, we don't know when. And shit still got to be made, still got to be put out there. Now, when it comes to, you got to understand, when it comes to Ford, the F-150 always going to reign supreme. That's always going to be Jesus for them. Because they got a bunch of, there's a, Lady, I work at the part time. Her husband's back at work putting it down there 12 hours because they got to catch up on the trucks. And for hey. them to have Arrowhead filled with trucks in the parking lot when the season's over, shipping them out left to right like they do all the time. You ain't telling me nothing new. I live out in the country, so I know how the F 150 is going to reign supreme. You're right. Yeah, so it's, that thing is, and it's a lot of people, you know, the Bronco thing is kind of kicking them in the ass, but. GM got the same problem with one of their vehicles because a friend of mine, he's sitting at home. Granted, he's still getting paid. He's been at home since the pandemic started, waiting to go back to work. And they sent his shift back two weeks, sent them home, let them you stay because they can't get what they need. And they trying to find another manufacturer for the parts. Like, it's real just fucked up. And, and you might so be right. Free money while you can. You might be right, but I'm not going to lie. I'm still bitter. I know you're a little salty. I know you're a little, you're a little salty. I, I'm a lot salty. As soon as I opened that email, I was hot. You like you salt on the snow day. I get it. You melting ice. I, I get it. But uh, yeah, you know, I know. Just grab a bottle and hug it and say it'll be all right. You know, you can find something else, you know. Uh, yeah. Hey, you lost your coach, you should lose your car, too. I mean, it just it goes hand in hand. Hey, don't get me started there because as, so as soon as we lost the coach, team got better. My fantasy team got better. My picks got better. Did okay. Got better. I, don't, I don't need Gruden. According to the legend, your team always comes out with fire. Then they look like run out of gas. So you just need to be quiet and see what they're going to do. Hey, at least my quarterback didn't get his neck snapped. Hey, my homes needed that. Well, he better snap out of it real quick because uh, how do you come out of a game where the opposing team's running back has more touchdowns than you. Have you seen our defense? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> we got more touchdowns and yards. No, we got more denies than they defense right now. And we don't even play. We could get together. We got some linemen. You could be a receiver. I could be a tight end. And we all could score. And they wouldn't know what to do. 
Spags needs to go. But I think it's like Tony said. They tired. They done too many deep runs in the playoffs. Bodies is hurt. They need to make, They need to get away. They need to recharge. There's no different than the NBA team. You can only go so far so many times before you get tired and you need that vacation. That happens in all sports. All right. They're complacent. Very. Hey, we got guests on the show. Got Kaz and Big Show. Kaz, you got like a great picture. What kind of camera you got? It's like your shit look like it's eight, four K times ten or something. I know, right? You know, I learned that I actually just have a regular uh, webcam on my laptop, but there's a section you can go in on the camera. You can actually adjust it. So I, I, I fiddle with it and fiddle with it, and then it's light. I'm asked to do that thing. I mean, because your, your picture is... Well, I can tell you what's wrong with yours. It's real You crazy. got them damn windows <laughs> behind you. Hey, you know, I had to have ambiance. Yeah, but when the lights are behind you, <laughs> Yeah, but worse. you got the lights going into the camera. That's going to mess stuff up. You got to have it... Try to show, show my lighter side. <laughs> Nigga, you ain't got no lighter side. What was we just talking about, Bell Fountain? Hey, hey leave the block alone. <laughs> man, I ain't been on Bell Fountain since I was a kid, man. I grew up 43rd. on 43rd. 37 43rd. Park Bell Fountain. Yo, I grew up, I know you know, 43rd uh, Brooklyn Park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I grew up across the street from it, directly across the street. Oh, yeah, you was in the hood. You was in the hood, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You were robbed a couple of people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I literally went down my old neighborhood. And why is it when you go back to something as an adult, it don't seem as big as it did as a kid. I feel like the block was so small. Car it is, I my car get down the street. It and I pull up to my old house and show my daughters where I grew up. These motherfuckers painted the house pink and black. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was uh, you know what? Daddy's right there. I don't know what that is. The house <laughs> seems so small compared to what it was as a kid. I'm like, well, I guess when you yeah. When you that size, everything seems magnified as you get older. You've seen it in real time for what it really is. you just like, this was so much bigger when I was a kid. It was, yeah, yeah. All right, gentlemen. Um, today's topic is uh, a little different. I want to talk to you all about two things, <laughs> regrets and wishes. And um, getting to the topic, keep in mind, I'm going to ask for y'all to give me your best case answers. No cliches. In other words, no, well, I wouldn't change a thing, dot, dot, dot. I like life the way it is. Bullshit. <laughs> Everybody would change something or another. At least one thing, I'm sure. So the first thing I'm going to ask y'all, tell me something that you regret doing as you look back in life. And also, what you would regret never doing that you should have done. Man, you know I thought about this topic, and I still to this day am like, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. You know, I think. Damn, even Ke even Kevin ain't said nothing. What, what's no, what's really going on? Letting the guests talk. Okay. There's, I don't know. There's, I actually have a list. I guess I'll just pick one. Uh, I actually have to say, I think I regret how I treated some girls in my life. I think I'm a better guy than I was at those times. And uh, I so don't you, know if I... So you was a player, huh? Not really. Not really. I wasn't really a player. Okay, y'all. just crushed a lot. I always kept it straight. <laughs> huh? I said he just crushed a lot. He wasn't a player. No, I just... I just... You just love I him found him. myself doing something... I don't know, man. I, I just... I wasn't straight. I wasn't straight edge every single time. That's what I think. I think I, I think with the kind of the way I was raised and the person that I truly am, I think I, I actually I wouldn't even say just girls. I mean just people in general. I think I, I could have treated some people uh, better. 
than uh, than I, I I did. I let it, I, emotions. I let emotions run wild a lot compared to logic. All right. What would you of uh, What do you regret not doing? <laughs> I regret not pursuing my music career. I wanted to be in music since fourth grade. And the only thing that pulled me away from it is my kids. I decided that my kids were more important and I pursued taking care of my family and going after my career. I couldn't do, I, I couldn't do both. So I had made a choice. I, I feel you on that. Joe, what about you? <laughs> I don't have any grants. I like my life the way it is. Uh, no. Uh, I would probably say my biggest regret, uh, biggest. Hmm. It's hard, man. Being a Chiefs fan nowadays? Um, <laughs> I put that in the top five. Nah, uh, probably, you know, with some of my... All right, let me, let me stop you all right there because I'm the non-Chiefs fan, but I'm going to tell you what, that's not a real regret because you ride or die with your team. Yeah, and I understand the Chiefs are y'all's team. That was a joke. Uh, oh, okay, I'm just making sure. Oh, psh. I'm looking at my room, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> uh, I, I was I, I was with them when they were two and fourteen, so we good, we all right. Um, probably one of my biggest regrets is you know with certain family members that have passed, not spending more time with them. You know, regretting leaving some things open. That, you know, that should have been closed type of thing you know uh closing those chapters in my life as you get older it's kind of a little bit more difficult to deal with sometimes <clears throat> okay uh, now piggybacking off of that um what is the one thing that you wish you could have done when you were younger uh that you could not only change your life, but also change the lives of other people. Wow. See, that last part's the curve. I would, again, go back and say I started college and just for no reason quit. And that old stereotype, I'm going to go back and never did. I think that had I committed to that and stayed with that, the lifestyles of my children and myself would have been better. Big show? I mean, this kind of my coaching career. I uh, wish I'd have done more. I've had a few opportunities to coach uh, community football teams and had one opportunity to uh, coach us an element or a uh, middle school team, but I didn't have the teaching credentials to do so and was too lazy to go back to school to get it. I wish I'd have done that. That would have been, uh, that would have been a lot of fun. I wish we I'd have, have done fun. that. We had fun doing that. I had fun yeah. doing that with you. I had fun doing that with you. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, if you could go back and um, possibly do be or go to that um, right now, if you could do any of that again right now, would you do that? At no. the age I am now? Yeah. No. No. Really? Yeah, because for me, I, I you don't know what the future's gonna hold. If I go back and then come forward, I don't know what life is gonna hold. I'm good. There's a reason that all of that didn't happen. So I run with that. And I've got other, you know, other rods in the fire right now that I 
there's no way I could do it at this point. So <clears throat> that makes sense. Now, if you could say something to someone, a loved one, a coworker, or even a total stranger off the streets, what would that be? Good, bad, ugly, right, wrong, or indifferent? Uh, even if you <laughs> wanted to give somebody a straight piece of your mind, what would it be? You don't even have to say who it would be to, but what would it be that you would say? It could be advice. You could be wanting to tell somebody off for years, never have, want to do it. I, I've never been shy of telling anybody off. I don't think I, I missed anybody that I wanted to tell them off. Uh, believe it or not, I did. I really care. <laughs> That's what I would say. I'm sorry. That'd probably be one I would say. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And to try to keep it brief, that yeah, that's what I would say. And and the person has some kind of access to me, so they ever heard it, they'll probably know who I'm talking to. Believe it or not, I truly care. And without the cameras, RJK, you would know who I was talking to if I told you. Right, right. All right, so believe it or not, that's the therapy session right there. Uh, real quick, <laughs> Big Show, man, I'm proud of you. Getting back out there, running. It's good to see you do that, brother. Thank yeah, you. Man. When I get this knee brace off, I will be <laughs> back out there with you. Well, I ain't running. <laughs> <laughs> but I am walking my ass off. Hey. Literally. So. The legs are moving. That's what matters. How much yes, walking are you doing? Um, anywhere between two and a half to four miles a day. Damn. I've been doing it mm, probably for about a month and a half now. I just started posting in that change deal on Facebook within the last week because I just seen it pop up on Facebook. I'm like, well, here's another avenue of keeping me accountable. So um, started using that as well. I'm gonna start following your lead, but I've been doing it too. Well, I've been writing my start writing my elliptical finally. You ought to that damn thing costs a thousand dollars. You said what? I said you ought to that damn thing costs a thousand dollars. No, no, no. Got it off marketplace for twenty bucks. No, no. <laughs> now I know what you paid for it, but I know how much it cost. I found somebody that bought it, changed their mind, and it fell in my hands. When uh, look, full disclosure, when it comes to finding shit online, Kevin is the luckiest <laughs> bastard you'd ever know. Really tell him about the tell him about them golf clubs. I hate you to this day for them golf clubs. <laughs> See, I'm always looking. I'm well, not always looking, but when I need to look, I'm looking. And I had a set of clubs my ex-wife got me. Had them about four or five years. My hybrid club got broke. I was like, you know what? It's time for me to get a, a legit pair of clubs. But I don't want to pay for them. So looked on up Marketplace. Lady had a set of clubs. Sadly, her husband had back surgery. Apparently, she hated golf. Them clubs was $200. She dropped them down to like $160 because she couldn't. They was under for a couple weeks. I offered her, uh, I think, $120. She met me at $130. Got the club, sent Richard a picture. Him and the guy he used to work with both was like, man, you got near a thousand dollars worth of clubs if you would sell it part by part. The bag alone was a couple hundred dollars. Three big birthers in it. And I was like, hey, I hit the mother low. She was so upset with him playing. He must always play golf and never at home. She gave me brand new tiles. Dude had a divot with a Timex watch on it. 
it just only hundred and thirty dollars. Wow. It was fantastic. Then, now y'all um, see why I hate that shit. But no, it's better. The um, yeah, y'all see the helicopter bikes and everything. Friend of mine bought the, bought spin bikes for him and his wife. Spent about four hundred dollars a bike. They was like, they go ride bikes and watch TV. Ride bikes and watch TV. They got bored with it. He put it on marketplace. Said he's selling them both for two hundred dollars. I hit him up, said, well, let Just me get, to get rid of them. And I was like, you know what? No, I'll take both of them because I found a brand that she had a hundred. I had a hundred. Eight hundred dollar bikes, two hundred dollars. And it came with brand new seats on it. That was about another hundred dollars right there that got spent. And he gave me the rubber mats that they go on so they won't move. Thousand dollars worth of bikes, two hundred dollars spent. And then this uh three and one elliptical exercise bike. That's a regular 240 I saw online. I gave them people realistic. I mean, I gave them like 45, 50 bucks. Again, save money. So when it's something I want, I look and I end up finding it. But what's crazy, I want a certain shape fish tank. Can't find it. But other bullshit I found with no problem. What shape you looking for? Kind of like uh, where it can fit in the corner. Kind of like an octagon type shape. I just ain't seen one yet. I can go get it in the store, but I ain't trying to pay a hundred something dollars because I really don't want no, like, because they all be like 70 gallon tanks. I don't want tall one. or wide? Uh, tall. Because I had one before and I liked it. But then when we moved into our townhouse, it was kind of old. This is going to be childish. My ex wife's grandfather owned properties and he put somebody out because they didn't pay their rent. And they just, he was like, you know how it goes. You don't pay. Eviction notice go in, you know, the sheriff come put the shit out. And he called us and was like, y'all want a fish tank for your daughters? Hell yeah. <laughs> so we went and got it, had it for a nice amount of time. But then we, we moved, we like, wasn't going to take it with us. So I was like, I should have never, I should have kept it. And then when I, uh, when we separated, I had a 50-gallon tank long wise. Rich, you remember that one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I came back, it was gone magically, so. That's all like I mean is <laughs> looking for another fish tank. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time finding a really tall one. Those are pretty rare because even though they hold just as much water because of the height, it's really not that much room for the fish. Cause they go more side to side than up and down. So now if you're gonna put small fish in there, you'll be all right. But that's what I'm gonna do. I ain't putting nothing big in it. Because when we had last time we had the little tiger or something fish or whatever. Crazy motherfuckers kept jumping out the tank. It was funny as hell, but after a while, I was like, you jump out, you go die. And one just kept going up, kept hitting his head on the top. I was like, I'm going to open this bitch and let you jump out. Damn. And that motherfucker did it, and I was like, this motherfucker's crazy. Nah, you need some ballast shark. A what? A ballast shark. What the hell is that? They're just like <laughs> little six to eight inch sharks. They look... Look like little bitty silver sharks. They look like sharks, but they're not really sharks. Yeah, they're not real sharks. <laughs> you you can put your hand in the water, you'd be all right. I'll put my hand in shit. Hey, but I used to have fun with my niece and nephew telling them, go ahead, put your hand in the water, see what happened. They <laughs> wouldn't do it. That's what my kids before. I'm gonna talk to them in the wound it. Then when it comes time to clean the tank, hey, take care of y'all pet. <laughs> yeah. That, that that's just when you dirty. put the cleaner fish in there, let them do it. Yep. Good point. Good point. <laughs> See, big I used to have a I used to have a few fish tanks. I was just trying to look at some of my friend's stuff to see if he had an octagon one on here, but he don't. So my uh, my uncle got me into fish tanks. He didn't have fish tanks in the wall. Mm. He uh he had a house in Springfield. He was looking to get them in the floor. I was like, you're doing too much. You put it in the floor. But he had saw something. And he was inspired, and I was like, you crazy as shit. You put a tank in the floor, but. When you're having a house built, you can do shit like that. Yeah, but yeah. he's stuck with just putting them in the wall, and then he got one in his house now to where it's the end of his bed or whatever. I'm like, oh, so you entertaining bitches. Tell him you're taking them to Sea World and stuff. <laughs> he got this big ass bed, and he got this 50 gallon tank at the bottom of it. I was like, you mesmerizing hoes. Man, you I quit doing babies, like the waves. I quit doing fish when I had a, an Oscar. And from a small fish and got to where he was the size of my hand. 
Damn. And my wife, while I was teaching karate downstairs one Saturday, decided she was going to clean the fish tank. And evidently she forgot there was a fish in there and the Oscar was in the cave that she removed out and she pulled the cave out, set it out on the front porch oh. in the 90, 90 degree heat. Ruined. <laughs> so you had yeah. fish for dinner. <laughs> so I was like, well, my fishing, my, my fishing tank stuff is done. I ain't going to buy another one. So now I did make the mistake because my uh my friend Marshall, <laughs> he had moved out, he moved his house out in Blue Springs. But he was like, he wasn't taking his fish. He had a tank full of um, African sickers. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Big fish. I'm new to it. I'm like, man, these are nice. Oh, shit. Fish. He had a uh, saltwater tank, didn't he? It wasn't saltwater, but he knew how to yeah, take are care fresh of fresh water. They are fresh? Yeah, okay. So I'm like, yeah. man, nice water. He tell me what to do and everything. So I had it all set up, had them. <laughs> they was striving, doing good. Then all of a sudden, winter time came. It's the fish tanks in the basement. Look, it's a little cold or whatever. They started dying one by one. Now, like eight of them. By three months, they all was dead. I was afraid to tell him. I knew he was gonna be pissed. When I told him, he was like, "Nigga, you killed all the fish." I was like, "I was feeding them everything. I don't know what happened." He was like, "Well, what if you had the temperature on?" I'm like, "What temperature?" You know. <laughs> Heater on. He never <laughs> told me he needed heater. And he was like, yeah. You're a dumbass. I said, No, you're the dumbass because you didn't tell me. Well, see, that's so, why when you said African cichlid, that first word African, that made me think, Oh, is it salt water? I mean, you know, that's why I thought yeah, it was salt water. They're beautiful fish. And yeah, they are. They come if in I'm different sizes. What all do I need? <clears throat> you need to tell me what all I need. But you can't put them in with just any other fish because they get no, aggressive. They they'll start, they they'll start attacking the fins of the other fish to where they can't swim anymore, and then they'll, they'll eat them. Yep. Because, like, if they can fit in their mouth, they good as dead. Yeah, that sounds Kind of like right. an angelfish. You can't put a whole lot of angelfish in the same um, You can't put tank. two males in the same tank, that's yeah. for sure. Because any, any other fish that's got the frilly fins... They'll tear that sucker right up. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm. Well, you know what they call angelfish, right? They angelfish? Them, well, the, the nickname, they call them uh, <laughs> fighting <laughs> fish. What? They call them fighting fish. That was Richard's neat old stat that we didn't need to know. <laughs> Typical hey. Raider fan. Hey, I'm trying uh, to help you. I'm trying to help you, you Kevin. That way you don't one. get... Kevin be down going to uh, PetSmart and said, yeah, I'll get two of those male fish right there. I, and, and wonder why only one of them is uh, swimming when he gets to the house. I will treat well, PetSmart like I did before when I had fish. The 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 girl's mom had killed a bunch of them, then went out of town. I was like, ain't this a bitch? <laughs> I said, hey, your mama's Kevorkian, but daddy's going to save the day. I was like, we're going to PetSmart. I went to the guy. I said, "I got five dollars spare. No money. Don't spare any calls. Give me what I can get." <laughs> we walked out. They don't know any better. They was like ten and eight. So we walk out with a couple bags of fish. They in heaven. I was like, "Yeah, that's right. Look what your daddy did. <laughs> Look at you setting it up. Lasted like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> five dollars. You, you got your money's worth." It's all about how I looked at that moment. That's all that matters. Yeah, you was yep. father of the year. You damn right. Yes, I'm uh that's gonna be my thing this winter, get another tank, get it up and going. Cause these damn dogs get on my nerves. I'm tired of, I'm ready to not be a dog owner. I'm just ready for it. Need a break. Don't really? get kittens. I got two kittens, man. I'm ready to strangle one and the other one, I'm just like, you gotta go. Yeah, I would never kids. do cats. Never. Two kittens. I want to mess with chicks that got cats. I'm good. Why? What's wrong with cats? Cats are cool, man. I, no, they're not. Yeah, they are. I hate cats. Not when they're not. Listen, one of my cats, I tell her that she's an angel with devil's wings. She is bad. She is into everything, climbing on everything, cutting up everything. Cats are evil. Exactly. <laughs> cats are the devil. They're the spawn but of the pet. other, but the but they the are. other kitten, the other kitten is just as docile and as laid back and as cool as, as anything. 
it's like it's it's, it's freaking frack between the two. But now, what's funny in my part time job where I worked is a senior spot. I'm walking about to go to the clock leaving Sunday. I think it was. This lady's treating her cat like a dog. She's walking with the cat, talking about she gonna see if he's going to her apartment or not. We didn't get to go walking outside. I'm like, you walk a fucking cat, and this motherfucking cat walked by me like, "What's up, Nick?" And kept going off. I'm like, "All right, then, bro." <laughs> That's out here a lot. Here, that happens a lot. They I, they really talk about doing that a lot. When the y'all cat have leave. y'all yeah, have uh, come toward me, I was gonna stomp the shit out of it. And y'all have happened. made my head just go. I ain't, I ain't never heard of walking a damn cat. <laughs> Bro, she like I'm in the hallway. She's walking on one side, the cat's on the other, and they walking stride for stride with each other. Like, you good, girl? I'm good. Let's keep going. And I'm standing right there, like, what the fuck am I looking at? And so I was like, don't need to get out the way because I'm don't want the cat to be like, oh, I'm scared. That cat looked at me and like move over a little bit. Let me get by. And she's like, oh, we're going to keep going. And I was like, this is the craziest shit I have ever seen. Cat hmm. didn't flinch. She just kept walking. Stopped, looked at me like a dog, up and down, and turned around and kept going. Oh, like, it's time for me to go home. <laughs> hey, I'm either drunk so, or I'm tired. Because I couldn't so yeah, remember that. that. Cat walked that. The cat walked that. She said, what's up, Nick? Basically. I was just like, what's <laughs> <laughs> <"Sup>, Nick? <laughs> It made me appreciate a cat, but I still was like, nah, that's a one in a lifetime thing. I ain't fucking with no cats. Now, the only yeah, thing I will say about a cat is, first of all, they're not as social as, you know, a dog. A dog is loyal like hell. They gonna lay beside you at all hours of the night. It don't matter. Cat don't want to have nothing to do with you unless they hungry or unless they choose they want to be petted. I want to be petted. I'm- but what I've learned with these two, with these two, actually, it's how you treat them from the very beginning, and from there, you start to you start to get these two because I'm home most of the time. Then, then, then Debbie, these cats are with me all the time. They're on me. They lay on me. They sleep next to me. When I'm I'm sitting in the bed, they get up around my legs and go to sleep. And it's all about how you raise them. If you you just leave them alone and let them do their own thing, then yeah, they don't want to be bothered. But these two attacking you, huh? So it's not like they're attacking you. No, these cats literally. I'll go upstairs and sit in the bed, put my legs up, and five ten minutes later, they're laying on my legs, sleep. Not with Debbie, with me, sleep. Follow me around the house. It's all about how you raise them. This is like a dog, actually. It's all about how you raise them. A cat's not going to bark when somebody's at your house that shouldn't be there. I'm just saying, (laughs) you know. My youngest just said she wanted when I said, take it to your mama's house, not here. Hey, whatever works. See, you can't talk macho shit with a cat. Listen to me talking about Listen to me talking about a cat. I'm like, yeah, man. They lay with me. They lay with me. They fall asleep on my legs. They fall asleep on my legs. And they I wasn't going to say you a real bitch. Like, I wasn't going to I don't know. If you put them on a the damn leash and walking them down the street, you can be as macho as you want, I guess. No, the fuck you're crazy. That that's like that's great, different that, from the guy's neon trying to look hard. It just don't happen. I mean, like, if you're walking a tiger or some shit like that, okay, <laughs> you're <laughs> But not if you're walking Garfield. No. <laughs> Yeah, Kev, you didn't mention the size of that cat. How big or small was this cat? <laughs> that cat, she was walking probably, you know, decent in length. Probably weigh about 10 pounds, 15 at the most. That's a oh, big that, cat. 10 pounds, a big a 10 pound cat. cat. That's no, a big cat. No, it ain't. No. Come out here that's in the, the whole, country. Come out here. Con- she probably feed it more than what she needs to. That's yeah. a big ass domesticated cat. That's a big, yeah. big domestic that's cat. That's her roommate. Probably got his own room. Like, I'm tired of you today, bitch. Just the cat was walking her. <laughs> Damn. All right. Uh, switching up the flow, we got about three minutes and some change left. Um, Kev, I'm going to talk to you real quick about uh, our Picks League. We don't we need both... to talk about that. Just go, go to the next one. We don't need to talk about that. No, no, it's good news. We both moved up. You are ranked number 16 now. Out of, oh. out of 29. I made a big jump. 
yeah. But I'm number six. Don't forget it. Um, <laughs> moving on. You looking good there in the uh, fantasy league, though. No, the fuck I'm not. I'm three and four, you bastard. Now, remember what I said earlier. It's a log <laughs> jam. It's a bunch of teams with two wins and three wins. I'm so still in the playoffs. It's, it's so still wide open. Matters. And you know what? I can get in that playoff race if three things happen. Obviously, I got to uh, I gotta beat um, – what's his name? Who do I play? Dathan? No. Yeah. yeah. Last year's champion. I got to beat Dathan. Tony has to lose. And whoever high performance is, they got to lose. Sound like a partial dinner territory. Yeah, I know. So we'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, just, just I want y'all send your money by playoff time. That's all you need to do. Just send your money by playoff time so I, I can know what I'm you. spending it on. Yeah, you know what you're spending it on? My liquor. Because from the way your team played, you about to lose that bet. And tell Tony to get ready to put, pull out his pockets too. We ain't waiting on game two. I'm calling it on game one. I'm going to win that one. Well, y'all, uh, I'm assuming Brady. this is a Raiders Chiefs bet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think me and Richard's bet is that the Raiders won't win, what, 10 games or whatever, 11 games, whatever it was. Yeah, it had to be more than 10. My so. brother that they'll win the series. You know, Richard's, he's lost last season. He's going to lose again this season. You know, he's, okay. he's, okay. he's still in debt to me, you know. And, and, and the and, bet with Tony isn't, uh, win both. All I got to do is win one. They oh, split okay. last year. They'll one. split this year. And then uh, was well, my cousin. He lost a bottle to me because we beat the Eagles. Well, Nelson's I, an Eagles fan. You know, I'm like Khaled. All I do is win, you know. I don't... Yeah, but I, I don't know why it took y'all so long to beat the Eagles. Hey, Should have watched our game. It matters. Yeah, okay. Um, since uh, you're talking about that, let's look at the West this weekend. Pats at the Chargers. I hate to say it, but I got the Chargers. Well, actually, I do. The way they dropped Who's 41, that? they dropped 40-something on somebody Sunday. But this yeah. is Who's the that the Chargers? Chargers? Patriots. Oh, gotcha. They put up 53 on, the, on uh, the Jets. Oh, it was just the Jets. Never mind. I got the Chargers. Who y'all got? I'd say Chargers are going to beat the Patriots. I'm it's at to L.A., right? Chargers. Yes. I'm going to start in the real before the Patriots. The AFC West all has home games. Uh, Washington football team at the Broncos. Washington. Yeah, I'll probably go Washington. I think sooner or later the Broncos win the game. I go Broncos. I'm Broncos, gonna go Broncos Plus, too. They can pull and get Watson. They get Watson. That's gonna change the game for them. And finally, the New York Football Giants. At the, Chiefs. Uh, the, the Chiefs are gonna win that game. We if own they, the if NFC. Barkley play, if Barkley play, Giants got it. Barkley ain't playing. I'm, I'm nope. going with the Chiefs. I'm going with the Chiefs. Uh, Even if Barkley squad, played. My squad has a bye, so we're not worried about that. Well, y'all should win that one. Should. <laughs> should. They might struggle. Hey, hey, on Gruden's off day, he got fired. So anything can happen. All right. The that's shoe, all the time we the got left. The other shoe will drop for the Raiders. The other shoe will drop. About week nine. Yeah, it'll be right after they get their tenth win, and then they'll never get to eleven. And I end up owing this bastard some alcohol. That's but anyway, probably what's going to happen. Yeah. All right, when they have a big show, we go have a shot together. There you go. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all the time we got for today. Appreciate y'all coming on. Love y'all. Thank you so much. All right, Kev. Uh, first things first. Uh, the Ken Griffey thing. Ken Griffey Jr. Yes. Um, that is a really good thing for him, and it's a step forward for us. Um, as most people should know, he's already joined the uh, Mariners partnership group. So we have another man of color in ownership of sports. And, you know, as far as we know from his career and his lifestyle, another good man of integrity. So that's good. Now, the question that you raised was, and how did you put the question? My, see, my thing with it is, yeah, it's cool, black man, minority, all that type of stuff, whatever. But the problem is, and this, this is where I give Magic so much credit. Magic lets you know I paid $40 million to be a part of this ownership of the Dodgers. 
so I could have a stock in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wasn't like Jay Z to pay a couple hundred thousand that didn't even have a full percent of the the Brooklyn Nets, but he was talking and moving like he was fifty percent owner. Ken Griffey doing that is cool, but let's put out there what you know. You ain't gotta say what you paid. Give us a roundabout figure and let us know what your percentage is. To where, if I'm a baseball player and I'm a great for the Royals. To give me an idea of this may be what I got to do so I can be part of this organization later on down the line. I think every team personally, whether it be white, black, whatever in the sport, if the person is a great, you should give them a chance to be a part of the team in some capacity ownership-wise when they walk away from the game. Because nine times out of ten, they made hella money for you that you couldn't make with somebody else. Because let, let's be honest, when Griffey left the Mariners, and all they had was A-Rod, did you care? No. Did they for real make money? Again, Was no. they even competitive? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. When It's literally like, if the scale's like this, him with Seattle, and this is Cincy before him, then he went to Cincy, the scale switched because he upped they, they pedigree. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure that bigot ass, racist ass owner, they had, well, no, her kids owned it then. She wasn't, I think she was dead by then or whatever. But he raised the stock of Cincy when he went. So it's just like, it's one of those things to where, just like with the Royal, George Brett, him and Frank White are legends in Kansas City, right or wrong. Right. They probably could eat free speed tickets. Damn near murder somebody and won't go to jail. Won't have anything on them. They don't own anything with the Royals. They barely got jobs with the Royals. Although Frank White's been more political, so I don't think he does anything anymore. You know, when he was managing a minor league team. Why don't they have a corner of the organization? Mahomes come in and he, he leapfrogs over them and he's a fraction of an owner. We need to owners should take care of their greats because they greats took care of them. Granted, yeah, you pay them or whatever, but what they earn don't touch what you made. You feel what I'm saying? I agree 100 percent So it's like I, I think in some regards that needs to change, or these players with their agents, they need to get smarter to where they decide, hey, you know, when I retire. If I'm at this level when I retire, you got to give me a fraction of you got to let me buy into the team at a fraction at this on this level or whatever. So it's like I think something like that needs to be done. Hopefully it will at some point, but you know that's a a wish. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't I don't hold my breath on it happening because these owners don't want to they don't want to give anything unless. They truly got to. Yeah, that's true. Now, um, where was I? It was something else that I wanted to bring. Oh, that's what it was. That's why I didn't have it written down. What? Uh, switching to celebrities uh, instead of athletes. The podcast that you sent me. Oh, so you li- did you listen to it? I did. Okay, so let me let me have let, let me yes, have, yes. Set, set it up for everybody. Set it up. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm actually surprised Kevin Hart has a good podcast. Uh, comedy Goldmine or whatever it's called, a Goldmine comedy. It's some. He's it's on YouTube. It's on his uh, LOL network. It's on satellite radio, or whatever. He's interviewing comedians, and he actually has a good. I've listened to a couple. One with Amanda Seals. Uh, Martin, I've listened to several. He did one I didn't know of Monique a couple weeks ago. So I was like, I need to hear this to hear what she's saying. The interview with Monique was actually a good interview. Although I think there was maybe once or twice he kind of was blowing smoke to clear his name from her fire. But overall, it was the damn good interview. My thing is, and I ask you this, then I'll give my side. 
what does anybody owe her? Because she was on the stance that someone should have came to her behalf when she was going through it. Where in the books does it say anybody got to come to anybody's side? Because Kevin Hart said point blank, I didn't know what was going on, so I stayed out of it. How come everybody else can't have that same stance? What gives her the audacity to think you, you, and you, and you supposed to come speak up when I'm supposed to protect me? But yet, let y'all tell it. You a woman, let me do my thing. I don't need protection. So why all of a sudden, he got to protect you? I don't understand that. When you on this hear me roar, I don't get it. Now, I get the movie got sold, and you was told you had uh, 5% ownership in the movie. That's on you for not enforcing that with Lee Daniels. That's on business is business. I love you like a big brother. If this shit take off, we getting contracts because it's what still a business, right? Because I don't want business to end to mess up our brotherhood. So we go sit down, write a contract. You know, I expect you to get more than me because this is you. I'm just a talking head. I know my role, my lane, but we'll have contracts to break that down. But her to think that he made what she say what fifty three mil extra, and she waiting on her payday. What I need to pay you for if I ain't got it in writing? I ain't got to give you nothing. We ain't shook yeah. on it. We ain't had no verbal agreement. We ain't had nothing. But and you know what? Say, Go ahead. I agree with you 100% on everything you done said. I'm going to take it a step further. Yes, the contract she had was with Lee Daniels. Once he sold the movie, the contract is null and void. Now, it is on her to go to the new owners and re-up the contract or try to get something out of the deal. If you don't do that, you don't do that. And if they ask you to promote the movie, don't go be like, well, I done already did my part. Because right there, you messed up. Because her thing is, she's saying that she already did her part and she doesn't understand why she's been blackballed. I was you, when you mess with the suits in Hollywood, whether it be one, two, or ten, everybody will know it. If you don't play the game, everybody will know it. And you will not be allowed in certain circles because you will have a reputation for not doing what you're told, not doing what you're asked to do. Here's where she dropped the ball, in my opinion. You said you had to deal with Lee Daniels. You were signed to his production company for that movie. You got paid 50000 and that and you did all the promo. So what she did do when the movie got sold to Lionsgate, it did what it did. They wanted to take it overseas. They wanted you to go overseas. They wanted you to go for a month, but you said no because you wasn't going to be making any money. Here's where you showing you have no worth. You're a comedian. Do comedians not tour overseas? Yes, they do. You can go together a tour while over there for that month to make money. Exactly. Is, if I bring you for a month, I got to bring you, your husband, your stylist, your hairdresser, your, your makeup person. So it went from me paying you to paying all them because I'm going to have to pay you to pay them. So therefore, your tag for promotion just ballooned up. I don't have to pay if I don't want to because we never got a contract. Common sense would tell you if I'm signing, if the movie's going to a bigger situation, I need to get in on that because you're going to want me to do more. So if you want me to do more, I need another 50, another 100. And for you to say, Tyler, offer you half a meal. And you said you didn't want his money, you want his apology. Which one is it? Because you're saying you didn't get no money. You're saying it stopped you from making money. This man's trying to solve your problem. Well, well this, is where, this is where I have the question. What is she mad at Tyler for? Because apparently Tyler said that she was difficult to work with. But see, what she failed to remember, when her talk show got canceled on BET, BET said she was hard to work with. 
said her some of her demands once she got that Oscar was ridiculous. And my thing is, you talking about it stopped you from eleven years from working? Bullshit. That that ain't stopped you from working. You was on tour not too long ago. You stopped yourself. This just happened a few years ago. So that that ain't stopped you. Uh, you had a claim from Roscoe Jenkins. You didn't capitalize on it. How you go blame them for it? Go so talking about everybody in the room told you secretly, I don't blame you, I don't blame you. Then that nerd go after Steve Harvey. Steve had you on his show and he talked to you directly. He wasn't hiding, but you're going to say, I can't believe my brother Steve. He had you on his show talking to you. But it's just, I think, this. when well, she made the comment about she wasn't comparing men and women or whatever, uh, well, you, with the whole Netflix thing, you went after, um, what's the white girl? The, the white girl was the comedian. When that didn't work, then you went after Dave and them to try to get money. So you did make the comparison. It wasn't them. So it's just like Kevin Hart used his platform to let her talk again. And it was just a lot of bullshit she was saying. Because if I go to, if I commit a crime tomorrow and I'm in court there and I need character witnesses, you don't have to testify if you don't want to. I can't make you do that. So it's just like, well, she waiting on somebody to come, you know, be that hero and Oh, no, this is the Monique I know. People ain't going to jeopardize what they got when they don't know what's going on and they know you a hothead. Hell, on top of that, your husband don't help none. But it's like, I give Kevin Hart props. I'm like, he going to try to put something together. I wouldn't do it. If I were to say, I need you to be there, you only need him to be there because you need him to check you because you're going to fly off the handle. You too damn grown back and so damn immature. I agree. I mean, from everything I heard during their conversation, first of all, she's not blackballed. No. I mean, she could get a job if she didn't have ridiculous demands and if she wasn't as hard to work with. I would venture so far as to say if she became the Monique pre Oscar win she would be much easier to work with than the Monique of today. And the only person that's stopping her from achieving her goals and getting back in the game is her. Well, see, that's where I got to somewhat disagree with you, bro. Because my thing is, and I look at it like this, who, when does she have a career? She was a comedian. We've seen her on stuff. But what about her acting made her, we got to get her? Uh, uh, but you see, that, that, was I, I agree with you on that. But see, where uh, I'm coming from, I'm coming from a smarter angle. Because if it was me, first of all, if Tyler Perry offered me half a mil, I'm, I'm going to parlay that into something down the line, some other type of business venture. Yeah. I would like to get another project off the ground and then let those snowball. Yeah. But see, what I'm, what I'm saying is... She didn't do that. What about her resume warrants the way everybody needs to work with you? If you think pressure's off her resume and Roscoe Jenkins, name something else that stands out. Yeah, we're going to be sitting here waiting for a minute. Exactly. Because other than stand-up, I can't remember any other movies. Uh, Listen, Parker's, Charm School, um... And what other movie she's been in with that one Fat Beach or whatever. Ain't none of that was, oh my God, we need to know. And Verdi talking about they only want to see the movie because two big black women. That's not that, that's case. that's the other thing I want to say. Her size ain't got nothing to do with it. I ain't got nothing to do with that at all. It was actually grand. I've never seen it because it bored me the concept. It well, a lot of people told me it was actually a good movie. Had nothing to do with size, a good movie. And what she failed to realize, and everybody know, a lot of pieces like that, movies like that, they go to film festivals in order to get into theaters. So that's no surprise. We've seen a lot of movies like, hell, Dave Chappelle got a documentary 
from when he did all that shit that, this past summer that's been going to film festivals. And he had studios did for it until this little incident happened. But yeah, he was taking that to festivals. That's how a lot of movies that are not action movies, that's what they got to do in order to get in the theaters. You got to take them to these festivals and somebody buys it. It's just like her ignorance is ridiculous. But you know, when you let your husband be a man, you don't never know nothing. And you just, you, you know what I'm saying? You trying to hit your wagon him like he going to do it. It's like ignorance plus ignorance equals failure. Yeah. Well, the saga will continue for her. either she will get wise or she's just going to become old and bitter. Sadly, I don't think it's going to get better because she, that's another thing. Like, uh, I remember Breakfast Club said it before. You won Best Supporting Actress or whatever. So you got money coming in off of that. Pay your own damn special, then sell it. That's what the hell Gary Owen do all the time. All his see, specials, he's done himself, then he sells them to Showtime. And that's, that's what, what I, I that's what I'm thinking she could have did with that Tyler Perry money right there. Yo, because you're gonna spend about a hundred, hundred and twenty-five thousand. You're gonna make that backhand over fist. Heard to make the comment talking about what Whoopi gets, but then you failed to re you said Whoopi's the most decorated. Whoopi put in her stripes. She's at a point where she don't need a, a major payday. She just need good money. She don't need to have that $20, $30 million payday. You give her 10, she's good because of where she is in her life. So you can't compare the two. And Bird to take shots like that, I was like, that. You tearing down your own people for yourself and it's not benefiting. And you wonder why I'm about, these are people I walk the stage with. They only go want to be bothered if you on the if your mind is right. And your mind ain't right. Well, because people aren't helping you to the way you feel, you just blacklisting them all. Which is stupid. Yeah. Unfortunately, some people are just by nature confrontational. And it ain't nothing you can do about it. That is true. All right, um, what else did you have up? All right, this, this is the last subject, whatever. Okay. Um, did you see, well, basically, you know the NBA players that got the insurance scam got called, right? Right. You know the set of NFL players before, before them, right? I think I read something about that. It was morning. like uh, 13, 18 players, and I think the biggest name is like Clinton Portis, and Tamar Vanover. You would think that dumbass after the, the drug shit with Bam Morris, he would want to keep his nose clean. So here, here's the thing that's so dumb. Players have been getting sentenced. Portis and Vanover will get sentenced and they like it's like January of 2022. So these niggas are sitting and waiting. They saying them two might get up to 10 years in jail. Damn. Yeah, exactly. You want to know for how much money? How much? 350000 is what a lot of them got in the insurance scam. I'm well, not doing I, I, I hope I hope doing that dime was worth it. So, but th this is where I'm like, it's kind of like you made it a big thing, but it's little. Two guys got sentenced yesterday. One of them was given 10 months of house arrest. The other's given 10 months in jail and 10 months of house, house arrest. Why are we making such a big deal if you're getting so little sins? That don't even worth no fucking airtime. Nah, just to smear somebody's name. That's all that is. I don't know. I'm like, really? Y'all made this big deal? All this research, all this money got spent? 10 months is all they fucking got? I was like, you couldn't come with something better than 10 fucking months? I guess they got some good ass lawyers. So I'm going so, if I'm putting Portis on uh, Vanover, I better not get 10 years when motherfuckers is getting 10 months. Because if I get 10 years, like we talked about, like I told you last week, I'm going to get 10 years. Or if I get a year, I'm getting that because of my name. Not because of what I did. I'm getting it because of my name. I'm like, and that's that bullshit right there. So I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with them two. Because I think this is going to curtail how the, how the NBA one goes with those players, which is going to be very interesting. 
Yes, sir. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look up that NFL one then and follow that some more. Then I, I tried to find the list, all the names I couldn't find it. But at the same time, I already looked that hard. Y'all was still still in shock with uh Monique and her an innocent plea that she was trying to give. She was such delusional denial. I think she was drinking during the interview. Some just didn't make sense. I guess I, I I don't agree with her at all. I mean. I'm sorry, no disrespect intended, but she's wrong as the day is long. All right, if you haven't watched it, I meant to tell you, granted, it was another wasted episode, but the last 20 minutes of I Am Athlete is worth watching when Noriega breaks down contracts and deals and how YouTube and how the digital basically changed the game. Is this the newest episode? Yeah, it's the newest episode. I have not watched it, so I will probably check that out sometime tomorrow. Yeah. So, but the last 20 minutes is the best part about it. Okay, cool. I will be sure and check that out. And for everybody watching this on YouTube, uh, should be a Thursday when these new episodes come out. Like, share, subscribe. That way we can keep this thing going. And it's important that you hit that like button because YouTube is an algorithm. And the more times people hit that like button, that thumbs up, YouTube sends it out to other people. People don't just magically get our show. It has to be sent to them because, you know, we ain't that popular yet. We working on it. We working on it. And if you have any questions or comments, leave us in the comment line. You can email us at the two dudes podcast at yahoo.com. We'll talk about anything. We ain't scared. Um, Kevin, as always. Great talking to you, brother. Uh, yes, sir. Also, uh, thanks to our guests again, Big Show and Kaz. Appreciate them coming on. Uh, everybody stay positive. Stay blessed. Uh, no, don't use the usual tagline, Kevin, because them jokers lost again. But uh, take us on out of here. Man, win some, you lose some. Just know it's some left over at some point. It's a long season. It's a long journey. It's a long walk. At some point, you got to get to the finish line. Question is, how you going to make it there in one piece or two? On that note, holler at your boys. Just don't yell. <laughs>